Nearly 50% of everything on supermarket shelves contains it. Most of us eat it every day at home and in restaurants. We cook with it. Clean with it. Create agrofuel for supposedly green transportation with it. And use it to make ourselves beautiful. But there is an ugly side effect. One that is destroying our planet. Worldwide, demand is soaring as this is the cheapest vegetable oil to produce. Demand has increased over 100% since the year 2000. Big profits, huge controversy, palm oil. Palm oil is produced by crushing the fruit and kernels of the oil palm. 50 million tons of palm oil are produced annually worldwide. 85% of production is within Malaysia and Indonesia. Indonesia alone produces 20 million tons annually, employing nearly 6 million people, generating more than 8 billion US dollars in annual exports. 13% of the nation's total agricultural output Indeed, Indonesia is now the world's largest producer of palm oil. The problem is not the palm oil itself, rather the plantations where it is grown. Oil palm plantations require low-lying areas below 1,000 meters above sea level. These lowland forests contain some of the world's richest biodiversity and provide essential resources for human livelihoods, such as timber, food and clean water. In Indonesia, most of this land has already been developed by people for villages and farms. The Indonesian island of Sumatra alone has lost over three quarters of its lowland tropical rainforests in just the last 20 years. All too often, new oil palm plantations are established at the expense of these critically important lowland forests. 70% of Indonesia's oil palm plantations were developed on land that was previously forested. Destroying rainforests, potentially wiping out entire species of flora and fauna, is not just unacceptable, it's also clearly unsustainable for the environment and for the industry itself. To address this issue, the Round Table on Sustainable Palm Oil was created. The Netherlands, Europe's largest palm oil trading nation, has pledged that it will deal only with 100% RSPO certified sustainable palm oil by 2015. The first such commitment made by any country. These are indeed very positive developments. But rainforests continue to be converted to palm plantations at an alarming rate. Even peat swamp forests, a unique and extremely important lowland ecosystem, are being destroyed for plantation expansion. As their name suggests, these swamps grow on deep peat. Peat is essentially undecomposed organic matter and water laid down over many thousands of years. Peatlands are far from ideal for palm oil production. Their development is highly capital intensive. It requires high levels of soil maintenance, a lot of drainage, and heavy fertilization. Soft peat deposits also complicate the construction of structures, roads, and railways. When converted into oil palm plantations, the peat must be drained and dries out. It then oxidizes in the air, and the carbon previously stored in the peat is released into the atmosphere, contributing to global climate change. Of particular concern are the Tripa peat swamp forests on the west coast of Sumatra's Aceh province. The Tripa peat swamp forests are important for disaster risk reduction, providing an excellent buffer zone against future tsunamis. They also store and regulate large quantities of fresh water, playing an important role in flood mitigation and ensuring a continuous supply of clean water.
Kalau dulu pertaniannya bebas, hasilnya juga memuaskan. Sekarang ini kekurangan karena apa? Airnya cepat diserap oleh alur-alur beku yang udah apa? Udah banyak. Sekarang ini sudah kering. Nah, bisa tanam apa-apa aja kan? Mulai nggak bisa dalam cari cari ikan. Dari sini sudah bisa cari ikan keluar. Nggak ada ikan nih karena ini udah anunya sudah ada kebun sawit. Destruction of peatlands is bad for people, bad for the environment, and bad for the oil palm business itself. It's not just about a few monkeys and tigers and stuff, it's economics. It makes no economic sense in the long run to convert these kind of forests anymore. An alternative solution is urgently needed. As a forward-thinking organization committed to both promoting sustainable oil palm development and protecting the remaining rainforests, the RSPO endorsed a proposal by the Switzerland-based NGO Panico to develop palm plantations on non-forested, degraded mineral soil lands as a solution to prevent further rainforest destruction. Throughout the archipelago of Indonesia, there are roughly 7.4 million hectares of fallow, partly degraded land that is already deforested. This represents an area approximately the size of the Czech Republic. 200,000 hectares of this available land is in the province of Aceh, at the northern tip of Sumatra. Panico proposed utilizing this degraded land for palm plantation development. It could produce enough palm oil to meet the coming decades worldwide demand without clearing more forests. Panico's main actors have been working in Indonesia for decades with the primary objective of preserving the remaining populations and habitats of the critically endangered Sumatran orangutan. The lowland peat swamp forests in northern Sumatra support the highest densities of orangutans in the world, but are still being destroyed to make way for new palm oil plantations. A single tree might have sort of a thousand species living on it. So when you chop down these trees and you plant a monoculture, you, you're not reducing the, the biodiversity by a factor of 10, you're probably reducing it by a factor of a million. Using existing fallow land on mineral soils instead of on peat would not only continue to feed the world's appetite for palm oil, but would also avoid the further irresponsible and reckless destruction of the peat swamp forests, the habitat of the orangutan. It is not only the orangutans who will benefit. The local human populations, the palm oil industry itself, and the environment generally will be among the beneficiaries. The Pan Eco Pilot Program has set out to test if utilizing degraded land for palm plantations is both feasible and economically viable, whilst also being socially and environmentally acceptable. To implement this new approach, known as the Panico Pilot Program, the RSPO enlisted Panico and its partners. Even more ambitious are the Panico Pilot Program's cultivation methods. The pilot program attempts to produce organic palm oil. There is no use of chemical pesticides, herbicides or fertilizers. All internal control system strictly monitors all activities in the pilot program, ensuring that all is in full compliance with the EU standards to be certified organic. The pilot study began with 96 hectares of fallow land near to the Tripa peat swamps in Indonesia's Aceh province. The first of many challenges faced by the pilot program was clarifying land tenure, an obstacle that would ultimately prove the most difficult to overcome. Historically, Aceh has long been a very troubled province, plagued by political instability, war, and natural disasters. 
most notably the 2004 tsunami. As a result, conflicts over property ownership are very common. 20% of the land used for the pilot study was in dispute. In most cases, these conflicts amongst landowners were resolved amicably. Some of the disputes could not be resolved, however, and unfortunately had to be withdrawn from the pilot program. The people who have the authority to make decisions is you know, the forestry department and the local government. All we can do is provide them with accurate, up-to-date information and, and help them as much as we can in their, in their job. After land tenure was initially clarified in the field, it then moved forward to the lengthy process of documentation review by the district government. Di dalam negeri masih ada sertifikat. Yang mengeluarkan sertifikat siapa? Pemerintah kan? Yang mengeluarkan negeri siapa? Pemerintah. The district governments are responsible for issuing all official legal land titles. Once land tenure is clarified and legally certified, using the land for the pilot program requires capital investment and participation of the landowners themselves, who are also referred to as smallholders. Most villagers in the region live on only around six US dollars a day. Within the first four years, before the first harvest, oil palm plantation development costs can reach as much as 3,000 US dollars per hectare, a sum that is simply unaffordable for the majority of potential smallholders. The standard method employed by large palm oil estates and processing mills to overcome smallholders' investment difficulties is to provide loans. These loans often lead to the exploitation of smallholders, as it makes it difficult for them to negotiate reasonable interest rates and fair purchase prices for their crops. To avoid this pitfall and provide fair and transparent accountability, a credit union has been established, enabling the pilot program's smallholders to access bank loans with fair and fixed interest rates. 63 smallholder farms subsequently applied for loans. Unfortunately, the earlier property disputes led to delays in land certification, a prerequisite for final approval by the bank. This in turn resulted in the pilot project being seriously underfunded. To overcome this investment barrier, Haneco itself provided bridging loans to the credit union. About half of the pilot program's members are local Archonese smallholders. The other half originate from Sumatra's neighboring island of Java. The Archonese are traditionally traders and fishermen, whilst the Javanese are better known for their agricultural knowledge and skill. Training, support and technical assistance for all of the smallholders was provided by This night jar sitting quietly in its nest with its two chicks in the midst of the pilot program with busy farmers all around symbolizes the ultimate vision of an oil palm plantation in harmony with nature. An environment where butterflies can still exist is also a good place for people. Through an integrated approach, hard work and determination, sustainable palm oil production can be achieved. <laughs>